Oh, well, hello. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just enjoying some hot cocoa on this cold winter's night. Hey, I'm Joe DeGanzig, and you're watching Smarter Home Life. Happy holidays and uh, season's greetings. It, of course, is chilly in, you know, about half of the world, and whatever your background or culture or beliefs may be, you know, people generally at this time of year give and receive gifts to each other and to your, fam to your, to your friends and family. And this year, more than ever, of course, some of these gifts may be technology gifts, and especially as I like to talk about on this show, they may be connected devices, connected smart LED bulbs, or some other kind of smarter home gadget. And you may be ready to open it up and try it out and so forth, but what I want to encourage you, and just to talk about a little bit on this particular episode, is just some guidelines, some good tips to go through as you do get ready to open that gift and take a look at it and try it out and so forth. So I wanna break this into just three different areas and they're pretty simple, just kind of a quick checklist, if you will, um, as you kind of start to look, in, to look at that device and, and check it out and, and see what it is all about. The reason for going through this little checklist is because some of the devices, as you may have heard about in the news in the past few months, some of these can be vulnerable to being opened by uh, malicious actors and organizations and people who are scanning the internet with lists of uh, default passwords and whatnot, or just vulnerable devices that don't have good security practices. So that's part of uh, why this episode is, uh, I'm even making the episode to kind of just inform you, not to scare you, but just to kind of inform you as you go through opening up that package and taking a look at it. So let's go to number one. The number one thing is take a look and Google the name of the company and perhaps the model of the device that you just received. And, you know, number one, do they have a legitimate website? Does it look you know, like it's been updated recently? Um, can you find any articles about the company or the device on say Google News or another news source of your choosing? Um, and see what's up. Are there any reports of the device being potentially compromised or being used in, um, botnet attacks, that sounds like a, a crazy thing, but really it's kind of, that's the way we describe these things uh, these days. If it seems to check out okay, then you're probably in the clear, but of course there's a few other things to look at. And of course, look at if the device is something that's going to connect to the internet or it's going to connect to your smartphone or tablet, uh, or even you know computer if there's an app for, uh, for a Mac or PC. Is that app recent? Does it look does it look okay? Does it look sketchy? You know, these are just telltale signs of um, is the company that's making this thing is are they okay? Number one, were they launched uh, in very very recently, and are they going to make it into the next six or twelve months? Do the background checking uh, yourself because these are devices, especially the ones that you connect to the internet. You are opening up uh, little doors into your own network into these devices, and you want to make sure that those doors are closed to most people except for yourself and those who you authorize for use of those devices. Okay, so number two is regular updates of the device's app and its firmware or internal software. And whether that device might be something like a connected smart lock, this is the August smart lock, whether it's something, of course, like even a connected uh, light bulb, this is the brand new LifeX Plus LED color changing smart bulb, uh, or even if it's something like the Amazon Echo, um, another voice activated device. Look at the date of the last time that the app was updated and look into the app and see if they're issuing updates, um, firmware updates to the device. Um, if there are no firmware updates available or if the device can't be updated at all, now I would be wary of that device because it means that that device has been manufactured. It's now in your hands. You're going to turn it on, plug it in, uh, or, or, or power it up, and somehow it is um, not going to be uh, updated at all, which means that if somehow it is found to be vulnerable in the future, nothing can be done if it can connect to the internet. And then, of course, it, if it can connect to the internet and you want to access it remotely and it can't be updated with um, software updates or firmware updates, then you're kind of kind of playing a little bit with fire because uh, if it did become vulnerable at some point in the future, the company can't fix that vulnerability. Again, the same thing with their app. If it connects to an app on your phone or tablet or, or PC or Mac, um, you wanna make sure that that app is also being updated on a regular basis to protect it and to, you know, obviously to give you some new features. Most app up, most, I can't talk. Most app up, up, most app 
updates are free of charge um, through the life of the device. You're usually paying up front for a little more expense on the device and you get the software updates for free. Generally, that's the, usually the way things go. And number three on the little checklist dovetails with the first two. So in addition to being mindful, checking up on the company, are they even going to be around in the next six to 12 months to keep issuing those um, security updates, app updates, firmware updates, be sure to practice good security overall and check to this to see if the device, if it's going to connect to the internet on any level, does it even have security on the device that you can change? Does it have a default password? Can you change it? Does it have a password at all? If it does not and it's going to connect to the internet or to the cloud, I would stay away from that type of device. We've heard in the news over the past few months that certain DVRs, baby monitors, even some cameras, just they connect to the internet, they make it easy for you to access, say, like recorded video footage um, through the cloud, but there's no security or it's a default password and people can get in and watch what you're, um, what, what's going on at your place, wherever that camera's pointed. So be wary of those kind of devices that don't have any security at all. And like I was just about to say, <laughs> practicing good security is easier than ever with um, services and password managers like LastPass because if you're saying well I don't want to have another password I have to remember or write down don't be writing down your passwords please um, use a password manager LastPass is something I use and I have used for several years it is extremely secure it's been vetted by multiple major security researchers and I trust it now uh, with practically a, a ton of my own uh, information for website logins and device logins. And you can use it for even um, credit card numbers and also for those security questions that you get with various um, online accounts. It is very secure. Obviously, you want to use the most secure password you can to secure the vault of information as well. And uh, generally, I use um, at least 12 characters uh, with all the letters and numbers and all that good stuff um, for the different passwords. And, you know, some of them are longer than others. But anyhow, um, practice good security. Get a password manager if you can. LastPass is 100% free across desktop, laptop, and mobile devices now. So there really isn't a reason to use it, to not use it. Um, the other thing is to turn on two-factor authentication. Generally, people themselves are not targets of these attacks. It's devices. It's it's um, your password may have leaked in a website hack or a breach, and it's just being scanned by um, some server or server farm out there. And the same thing with these devices. So it's really not you. You're you're not. You don't have to say, well, I'm not vulnerable. I'm nobody. It's not really that. They're just taking a massive list and they're just running these things to see what they can get in uh, and cause trouble. Something like this: the Amazon Echo Dot. This is the original generation, not the new one. Although they're very, very, very similar. Um, this is a listening device. This is a device that's going to take your commands and can potentially also connect across to other devices. This is tied to your Amazon account. So please, if you're getting one of these or a Google Home or, or any other device that's tied in with a major account that you use for multiple things and services, please practice good security. And again, that two-factor level of authentication makes it harder for someone else to potentially get into an account of yours because you've got to have that approval level um, so that no one can just get in from an unknown device. Nothing is perfect. There is nothing that's absolutely secure unless you just pull the plug and live kind of off the grid. Uh, but if you do want to play in this smarter home world um, that I talk about on so many of these episodes, it is um, you're going to be in a connected um, world. And like I said, some devices, the Bluetooth only ones, I'm going to give a little bit of a pass to those because, again, they're generally kind of firewalled off by your phone or tablet. And especially if you're not home and those devices are sitting here, they can't connect to the Internet at all. So, again, check the website, check the app, check the regular updates. Are they, is, the, is the company seem legitimate and okay? Are they in the news for bad things? And eh, stay away. And, and again, use please use good security. Now, after saying all of that and potentially scaring you and saying, oh, put that... Put that device back in the box and, and send it back and, and uh, get, get something else uh, or get nothing at all. If it is a good thing, if you've gone through your list, if you've checked the good security tips list twice, you'll find out if your device, of course, is naughty or nice. All right, I'll, I'll stop with the holiday puns, but uh, I just had to. So anyways, once you get through all of that and the devices and the little products and gadgets that you have received, 
they're good to go, you're using good security practices, then have fun. These devices are so cool, right? Today's home automation world can be confusing. I'm trying to help you navigate that with the episodes here on Smarter Home Life, but having a, a, a door lock like the August that can automatically unlock as you approach. Uh, color changing light bulbs that can adapt to the time of day and be different types of uh, cool to warm white or, or, or creating beautiful ambiance with colors and just a million other things talking to our uh, the Amazon Echo or the Google Home or you know to Siri um, there are so many cool devices and products that are out there and I'm sure that you're getting a few of them at least one of them this holiday season you can't wait to just open it and start working with it and integrating it into your home whether you're just getting started or you're kind of along that route of getting to that mythical destination that I call the smart home. But along the way, I like to think of this as the smarter home. And of course, that's the name of the show. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. If you've been part of what I would like to call the extended family of Smarter Home Life, you've been a subscriber, you've liked the episodes, you've watched the episodes, then Thank you for making 2016 great. It's been amazing. We are just about uh, wrapped up at the end of the year. A few more episodes will come out. And I just want to say thank you so much for making th this channel, the website, and everything. You've helped me to build it because if you weren't watching and looking at these um, articles, website posts, videos, and little bits of things that are, are on social media, then I probably still wouldn't be doing this nearly three years later. I'm going to go back to my kind of probably lukewarm hot cocoa at this point and say make sure that you make your home a little bit smarter every single day it changes and gets smarter with every decision you make with every device that you bring in and every little adjustment and uh, programming and uh, programming decision that you make with all these devices and how you connect them to to create your smarter home happy holidays and the best wishes for a great start to the new year. I'm Joe Deganzik. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.